to God be all the glory and the honor. Amen. 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 You may Amen. be seated. I bring you greetings from West Virginia in America. <laughs> West Virginia is a mountain state. And if I'm in America and I say I am from West Virginia, they make a joke about me. <laughs> they say that one my, my legs is shorter than the other. Because I'm always walking around the mountain. I promise you my legs are the same size. <laughs> Amen. I'm here by revelation. When I was invited to come to Armenia, it was after a long season in Africa. So I, I resisted it for a while, but the Lord made it very clear for me to come to Armenia, and I didn't even know where Armenia was. So what do you do when you don't know something nowadays? You just go to the internet and you Google it. <laughs> so I, I, it was actually Yahoo and I looked it up and it said, Armenia is the country half the size of West Virginia. When I'm in your country and I see the mountains and stuff, I feel very much at home. I've got a secret for you. I know that the Lord brought me here to bless, but I receive far more than I ever give. I have fallen in love with the country of Armenia, its people, its church, its great leaders. When, when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask the Lord at least one question. I don't think it's fair. You know, I'm a child of God. Doesn't your children tell you that's not fair? That's not fair. I'm going to say, Father, why did you give the Armenians all the beauty? They're the most beautiful people in all the earth. Amen. <laughs> Amen. A man said to me one time, a man looked at me and he said, he goes, well, at least you better smile. It'll help you. I, I don't have a, um, I don't have a, uh, a, a family line. It's like in America, there's some that are Italians and German. And some, I don't have, I'm like what we call a mutt. A dog that has no pedigree. <laughs> I wish I was born in Armenia. <laughs> I, I will try to be in a hurry, but I don't want to be in a hurry because this is my last day. Here. And so I will, I will do my best to hurry, but I, I want to just capture this moment in my heart. I want this to fuel me for many, many days. I will, I will be sitting and I will be drinking my coffee, but I'll, my heart will be in Armenia. Yeah. Amen. Amen. What I want to share with you today is a message the Lord has been speaking to me about for the last two years. 
Այն ինչ ուզում եմ ձեզ հետ կիսվել, մի պատգամ է, որ տերը ինձ հետ խոսել է վերջին երկու տարիների ընթացքում։ I have pastored my church for 27 years and I have noticed something that crept into our church. Ես եկեղեցին, որտեղ հովում եմ, արդեն 27 տարի է, որ հովում եմ, եվ մի բան եմ նկատել, որ մի քիչը ազդել է մեր եկեղեցու վրա։ When I shared with it, it began to be not only a word for my church, it became a word for our state and then it became a word for our nation. And so I realized that it's a word that I must carry in my spirit and help everywhere I go. So what I would like to deposit in this room today and among this great church is that I might be able to help create a culture of honor. Now you understand a culture is a set of beliefs and behaviors of a people. Վարմունքի, վերաբերմունքի և հավատանքների մի համակարգ է։ Դուք ասենք փողոցներում ձեր երթևեկությունը աչակողմյանը, ինչպես և մեզ մոտ է։ Հովիվ, եվ որ գնում եմ զինվավ է, նրանք ձախակողմյան է։ երթևեկությունը և իմ մտքի համար դա բավականին դժվար է։ As long as other cars are around, I know to drive on that side. But when I come to an intersection and there's no cars, I sometimes go the wrong way. Եվ որա շուրջ է ուրիշ մեկենաներ լինում են, գոն է դրանց նայելով, իմ անում եմ ինչպես կշեմ, բայց եվ որ խաչմերուկեների եմ հասնում, մեկենա չի լինում, երբ եմ շպոտվում եմ, որողությամ գնամ։ So a culture is how a group of people behave, how, what they do. Մշակույթը մի բան է, թե մարդկայի The Bible says in 1 Peter 3.22, Jesus occupies the highest seat of honor. You know, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, It also says that Jesus is in the highest, seated in the place of highest honor. Hebrews 12 and 2. You wanted to say he sits. Jesus is seated in the place of honor. And we are gathered here today to worship him who is in the highest seat of honor. I want, I want to just uh, speak special honor to Pastor and his wife. I have grown to know them these past two days. Եվ ուզում եմ հատուկ պատվի արժանացնել ձեր հովին և կնոչ, այս երկու օրերին մի քիչ նրանց ճանաչեցի։ Առաջին տեմոթեոս 5-17 նասում է։ And you know that coming into your country as a guest, you have given me such honor. Եվ ձեր երկիր գալով էլ, ձեր վերաբերմունքից ես մեծ պատիվ եմ ստացել։ But what about everybody in this room? Is there honor for everyone? Բայց ինչ կասենք մնացած մյուսների մասին այս սենյակում, արդյոք ամեն մեկին պատիվ տրվում է։ Is there honor for Hovhannes John? Արդյոք Հովանես ճանը պատվի արժանանում է։ He served us the last two days very wonderful. Այս վերջին երկու օրերի ընթացքում նա հրաշալի ձևով մեզ ծարայեց։ I cannot call coming to Armenia a missions trip because it's the only place I gain weight when I come. Հայաստան է, եվ որ ես գալիս եմ միսյոնյարական ճամպորտության միակ վայրն է, ո They spread a table for us that was so wonderful. So how about the person sitting next to you? Is there honor for you, Sam? But inch kases kokoch kan istad zmartun. Samvel, du patvi arjana numes. Is there honor for Sam? 
Sami Hamar, Kapatif, the worship leader. Where, where, where are you? the worship leader? Where's that young woman? Okay. Okay. Has she been raptured? <laughs> For two days, she has led us so powerfully in worship. And then I heard her preaching. <laughs> she can do it all. Amen. 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 What does the Bible say about honor? In John 8, 49, Jesus reminded them that he honored the Father. And Revelations 4 and 11, it says the Lord is worthy to receive honor. In 1 Corinthians 6 and 20, it says that we are to honor God with our bodies. In Proverbs 3 and 9, it says to honor the Lord with the increase of our wealth. You know, Revelations 5 and 12 said that Jesus will be honored with a loud voice, worthy is the Lamb. In Ephesians 6, Paul quoted the fifth commandment, honor your father and your mother. I would like you to see this one at the very end of the verse says that if you honor your mother and father, you will have a long life on the earth. In Ephesians 5, 33, it says to honor marriage. In Romans 12 and 10, it said for us to delight in honoring each other. Now it's getting, according to Americans, it's getting a challenge because Romans 13 and 7 says to honor our government. We pay, we pay lots of taxes. <laughs> you don't own anything in America. You just rent it. You rent it from the government. <laughs> uh, but the Bible says that we are to honor or respect even those who serve in government. And then, it, in 1 Peter 2 and 17, then it says this honor all men and Honor all men and honor the king. So honor all men. Now that one is the one that calls me to stop in my tracks. I think it was because I grew up with the understanding that somebody must earn my respect. You know, I, 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 I was confusing something and I think the word of the Lord showed me differently. In this room among the believers, do we have to earn honor? Bible says, Bible says, honor, honor all men. So he, says, so he says, to value one another and respect one another. Not only those who have title and position. It says to honor all men. Some people say, I'm only going to honor if they deserve it. But 
I got in trouble with my mother. Yes, my Ricky said to the Zvarutunune. Because I'm the last of nine and I have an oldest brother. Yes, in the Yerehanerit Pokerne, Yev Avag Yerpairune. My mother had a big family. She, uh, let me just, this is not a part, but I just want to tell them that my mother, my grandmother lived to be 98 years of age. Im Tatika Abrele Minchev in the Sun Ut Tari. She was the first Pentecostal in a southern part of West Virginia. She would often lay hands on me as a child and pray for me. And when, and when she went to be with Jesus, she had 130 grandchildren. That's a lot of grandchildren. Do they have that many in Armenia? <laughs> 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 so I can't No, you're fine. No. My oldest brother was I, I felt he was being disrespectful to my mom and dad. Yes, Matatsume, Nakatume Vorim Avag Yekpire, Anhar Galit said Vera Morris Yev Morris. I would say to my mother, Why do you give him things? Why do you put up with him? If my kiss as me chuck neran banesh talis, in chuck neran hashviarno. She said, Listen to me, young man, he's my son as much as you are. If na in Zasume Lissi Dras to pokerness, Yev Nile Nunkan Zavak in Samar Vorkan do. And she said, You will respect him. Just like you respect the other brothers and sisters. Why well, I don't like him, I told my mother. She said, I don't need for you to like him, but you will respect him. <laughs> my oldest brother, he, he it took a long time to come to Jesus. But, uh, but I'm so thankful 10 years ago he found the Lord in a very powerful way. And this past March, Michael and I got to be with him my first time in his home in 35 years. Hallelujah. You see, when we say you have to respect my honor, I mean, you have to earn my honor. We are disregarding that the Bible says there is honor already ascribed to you. I have a, a great deal of respect and for this, my brother Armin, because he has written a book. So he has attained a higher level of honor for me because I know how hard it is to write a book. You know, when, when someone is a great musician, we have respect for their gift. But there is another honor that's automatically given to every person in this Room. When we honor one another, we create a safe place for people to find Jesus. Creating a culture of honor protects the value that every one of us are free to serve the Lord. So, so honor releases freedom for everybody. When I honor you, I'm acknowledging your sovereignty. That's a big word. I don't know. When I honor you, I'm saying you're free to choose Jesus. You see, that's the very essence of having a relationship in Christ. You know, on the other hand, religion sets up a bunch of rules. When I love you, I set you free. But in religion, I 
I control you. Եվ որ ես քեզ սիրում եմ, ես քեզ ազատություն եմ տալիս, բայց կրոնի մեջ վերահսկում կա։ Religion creates anxiety, it creates fear, it creates shame. Կրոնը ստեղծում է անհանգստություն, կրոնը ստեղծում է ամոտ եւ վաղ։ Do you know what religion values most? Religion values that sin is greater than love. But in our relationship with Jesus, love covers a multitude of sins. So when I love people, I'm acknowledging that they are free to serve the Lord. You know, when my daughters are very young, then I'm, I'm teaching them, I'm training them, I'm right with them, hands-on. And their freedom grows as they increase and grow and become adults. I'm their father. They expect me to do that. But there came a moment when my daughters become young women, adults, that I realized something very powerful. I don't, I am not their Holy Spirit. I'm not their Holy Spirit. I'm their father and I will guide and guard and protect and do everything I can. But I respect them as individuals that they must make their own choices in God. Do you understand freedom is what the gospel is all about? The Lord delights when we freely choose to worship and love Him. Isn't it a good thing? Isn't it a good thing for us to be free? Amen. I love freedom, don't you? If I, if I have to control you to love me, if I have to control you to serve, if I have to create pain and shame to make you do right, you might, be, you might be doing that on the outside, but on the inside, you're not really free. And like Pastor said earlier, the priority of heaven is love. And my sister quoted 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1. If I speak with the tongues of men and angels, but I don't have love, I'm like a clanging cymbal. This is my translation of that verse. If you have not love, you're just noisy. If you don't have love, you're just making noise. I want people to feel safe around me. And love frees them up to be who they are. I don't want to be that they're so rigid and afraid and scared that they're going to do something wrong. No. I love you. And so we must create an environment, a, a culture of love and honor. First John, First John 4 and 18 says, there is no fear in love. When I honor you, I call the best that is in you out of you. So let me ask you, what is the opposite of love? Some people say the opposite of love is hate. The opposite of love is fear. 
Love and fear are enemies. My daughter went through something not too long ago and she said to me, uh, she said that I, I, I was tempted and I, I was so discouraged and I almost done something wrong. She said, but I thought about how much you love me and I didn't want to disappoint you. So she said, I ran back to the love, the love of my father. I, what? I ran back to the love of my father. Many years ago, I had a, a man that was on our, on our leadership team. And he went through a terrible thing in his home and went through a divorce. I don't know why it is in America when we get into problems, we run away from the church. The it's, it's, it's like the church is only for perfect people. But shame and pain cause people to run away from people like you and I and from the church. I want people when they have a challenge to think I must first go to church. And after many months I saw this man on the street and we were talking and I, I hugged him and I loved him. So he thought he was going to shock me and he said, well, I, I've turned to alcohol. I'm going to the bars and the place to drink. I loved him and I said, that's not who you are. I said, go ahead and do what you need to do. But it's not who you are, and I love you. About six months later, he came back to the church. He said, Pastor, it was so terrible. Every time I would go into the bar and I wanted to drink, you, you, he said, Pastor, you messed up my alcohol. Every time I, I looked into my glass, I saw your face. And I, I could hear you saying, I love you, this is not who you are. He said, it just didn't do it for me anymore. He said, I had to come back to my father's house. <laughs> he, he is serving the Lord in a great and mighty way. Here's what I believe. Love not only casts out fear, it creates safety and peace. You see, um, what caused me to go into this message was I got treated very dishonorably and perhaps deserved. I felt deeply disrespected and I don't think I acted properly. So I realized Jesus, though was dishonored at times, he never acted dishonorably. Jesus remained, he remained, Jesus remained the same everywhere he went. I want to be the same everywhere I go, whether I'm honored or not. So to do that, though, I have to have a deep sense 
of the identity of Christ in my life. But it was those who honored Jesus who released the power of God from his life. When you honor someone, you release the gifts out of their life. So I was my, with my, my companion in ministry in Africa. We'll walk a little bit here. We were in Nairobi and walking down the street. He said, let's go into this shop and let's uh, go in here and buy some uh, gifts for our wives. We just randomly picked this one shop on this street. We bought a, pieces, a few pieces of jewelry for our family. Before we got ready to leave, uh, he said, my companion said, why don't we bless this place of business? This man had been... This man had been very honorable to us. And so we laid hands on him and began to bless him, his family, and his business. We went back to America and it would be two more years before we would come back to Nairobi and Africa. So two years later, we're walking down the street. And out of this left side, a man grabbed me. You may think I am God's man full of faith and power, but I was very afraid. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, wait, 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 you can have everything. You can have it. You can have it. He goes, no, 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 no. He said, man of God, pray, pray, pray. He said, two years ago, you bless my business, business is very good. <laughs> Here was an unbeliever, but had received the, the life of the gift from us. And so he honored us. And we were happy to be able to release that gift again. Boy, my daughters have learned this very thing. Oh, they come in and they say, Dad, are you, are you, do you need anything? You good? Can I get you your favorite something to eat? Are you comfortable, Dad? And I said, why? What do you want? Because <laughs> they know the honor in me gets the best out of me. You know, the Bible says that we're to honor our parents, but what if our parents were not available or, or abusive? What I believe is you look for some deposit of glory some way. And you refuse to tell all the bad and everything worse. And you focus in on the one very thing you can't honor. I was um, a young man in high school and was given the opportunity to learn to go to the bank and be a bank uh, in business in the banking. So the first thing they did was they trained me to be a bank tailor and, and stand at teller and stand at a window. But you know, customers come in and bring deposits and ask for withdrawals and all of those kind of businesses. But every Friday and on my first Friday came in a very little small petite businesswoman. 
Առաջին ուրպատ որներ, որ ես աշխատում էի մի շատ փոքրամարմին տարիքով բիզնես կին եկավ։ She was dressed so proper. Շատ պատշատ գեղեցիկ հակնված։ And she would carry two, two um, of her bank bags and she would hold them real high like this. Նա իշ հետ երկու բավիսակ պաշկ ուներ ու բանքի համար և այսպես իր հետ կրում էր։ And with great dignity, she would come and stand in front of my window. Now, there were many bank windows in a line. When she came to the door, the other bank tellers would run. Nobody wanted to wait on her. Because she had a very meticulous way of doing what she wanted done. So she, lay, she laid the bags down in front of me my first time. So I reached for them. I reached for them. So what I do for, did for everybody. You know what she did to me? Come on, show them. Show them. She smacked my hand. She said, no, 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 young man, you will do the way I want you to do. And all the other bank tellers would laugh at me. And so I slowed way down. I, sl I went very slow. I don't like to go slow. I like to run with Hovhannes because he flies all over Armenia. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like to go slow. I want to go quickly. Let's get the business and get it done. She would lay out every deposit other customers would come behind her. And I was feeling the pressure and stress of trying to get her done so I could work on it. But I had remembered that my training from my mother and father was I must respect and honor this elder woman in front of me. But yes, he shume in the Nogneritis, that's at Dasser and Ranz Dastira Katsbaner, or Piti Tarikov, Martkans, Hargem, Upatvem. So I would look over her to the line behind her and I'd say, We're going to be a long time. Yes, now you may, there Neranit said, Oh, Hertum Gangnats, Martkans, Asmam, Esgorts, a Yesh Karetevel. You might want to choose another window, and she would just smile. Good said, Oh, Urish Patohaneri Motenak, I'd kin el Zuptumes. After one, two, three Fridays, she'd come through the door and come directly to me. And all the other bank tellers would just laugh because I had to take care of this very difficult person. And I would look over her and say, you might want to choose another teller. Because we are going to be a a long time. <laughs> well, I finished several months of working with the bank and I went back to finish my last month of high school. And right before I finished the school, the, the school counselor came to me and handed me an application and said, fill this out, fill this in, complete this. I said, what, what is this? What is, he said, you have made a friend at the bank. She said, she has called the school and asked where you are. And she wants to know, what are your plans? Do you want to be in the bank as a bank official? I told her that you are going to Bible college. He, he said, so College. she sent this application and said, fill it out. I'm going to give you a scholarship to pay for your Bible college. Well, how did that happen?
I did not honor her to get anything from her. I didn't even know that she was a wealthy woman. She just was a businesswoman in front of me. But because I honored her, I released what she had in her life. Giving honor in giving honor among us releases the life of God into every situation. Every one of us have weaknesses, limitations. Every one of us have challenges. And yes, there's honor for those who have attained something. But I'm not talking about that kind of honor. I'm talking about the honor that's already given to you as born in the image of God. Colossians chapter 2 verse 10 it says that we all are complete in Him. It says this. Asume. It says that every one of us are perfect in Jesus. Amen. Make us Jesus image katarialeng. You know, one of the things that happens in America is that we try to rank people on like a one to ten. Menk America amikite kinchen kanum portu menk martkans asenk mekit tas sandrakov. And so, when something is really highly valued and perfect. We put it a, a perfect ten. We call it a perfect ten. And you know, they, they use the number ten as you have attained perfection. Now we know that we are all moving toward Jesus and gradually changing. But the Bible says I'm to honor you as being complete in Jesus. Religion says I have rules for you and I'm going to keep you in check. I'm going to control you and bring shame and pain to you. And Jesus says, I will give you the truth and set you free. I will give you the ability to choose me and to love me and to honor me. And I, and I will allow you to honor one another in my spirit. Well, I was uh, speaking about this one day and I said, I said, do you feel like a 10? Most people say, I'm a, I'm a one, I'm a two. Because we feel more in touch with our weakness than we do his presence. You know what I did? I made me some round stickers with the number 10. I stuck them on the forehead of every person in my church. I went down the aisle and found a young woman who grew up as a pastor's daughter. Yes, Was it six children? Does she have six? Rebecca? I think she has six children, but her husband had died. When you have six children and you're a young woman and your husband dies, you don't feel like a ten. When I stuck that tin on her forehead, she fell to the ground and began to cry and weep. Just turn to your neighbor and say, I see a tin on your forehead. You, you say that now. Yeah, tell them. 
I see a ten on your forehead. Yes. You are greatly valued in the Lord. And when we honor one another, we release the life of God in this place. The presence of God is drawn to a people who will honor and respect and value one another. We have to get over panicking because somebody has done some sin. Yes, we understand and know what's wrong. Do you know there were two trees in the garden? One was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The knowing good and evil. And one was the tree of life. I want to stay in the tree of life. When I jump into the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, I start saying, you're good, you're evil, you're good, you're evil. You're there is none righteous, no, not one. We have the righteousness of Christ. He has completed us. God does not rank anybody in this room above somebody else. There is honor for every one of you. You are children of the King of the Universe. You have been blessed by the presence of the living God. And so I cause you to rise. Rise, Armenia, rise. You're not the least or the last of anything. God has written a ten on your head. Pastor, I feel like I'm a zero. I'm a zero. I'm so poor and I'm so bad and I'm such a zero. You know what I tell people who tell me that in America? Oh, get over yourself. <laughs> Did you know who the one is? There's only one whose name is above all other names. He is the Prince of Peace. And when you put a one with a zero, when you put a one with a zero, a one and a zero makes what? A ten! You are a ten! Prophesy to your neighbor and say, you are a ten. You understand I said prophesy to one another that you are a ten. There are many gifts in this room. And, the, and I declare this day that they all are released. To bring strength to this dear man and woman of God. And the life of God flows in this place. And people are safe and secure in this house. Say it again. Just say it one more time. Because of great honor that you give one to another and you declare from this day forward you are a ten in Jesus. I honor you.